Hi all and welcome to this series of interviews with interesting people in the translation business brought to you by Cloud Online, the translation company. My first guest hails from Ireland and he's the founder and chief architect of a major software as a service company called Kanpan MT. And his purpose is to take us into the future of translation by means of statistical machine translation in which he is an expert. Or is the future already here? Tony will tell us. Welcome Tony, it's great to have you for this interview and thank you for accepting. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm just going to start from a, a more general aspect and then follow up with personal questions related to your company. Now, uh, I recently read that the translation industry is set to grow by 40% in this decade from 2010 to 2020. What is, in your view, the role of MT in this growth of machine translation? Sure, yeah, you're quite right. The, the machine translation sector is going to be the fastest growing sector of the localization industry. And um, they're predicting huge amounts of growth um, in this particular space. In fact, I think the standard localization industry, and, and, and that includes interpretation, has been growing at a compound annual rate of about 7%. And uh, machine translation is growing at something like 30 to 40% on a year on year basis. So there's a phenomenal interest in machine translation. And of course, what's driving that growth is the explosion in content. Content is, 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 is everywhere. And it's predominantly electronic-based content. So clients are moving their user assistance material onto the web. They're uh, translating user forums to support the products that they're selling in their countries. And um, they're actually building online help systems that they want translated, and they want them translated really, really fast. And then, of course, the explosion in e-commerce is driving billions of words and the requirement to get those words and um, translated. And of course, there's kind of a, a universal rule that we all really, we, we experience it every day. When we see sites in our language, we're more inclined to engage with those sites and perhaps transact and buy stuff through those sites as well. So I think there's a number of factors driving um, tremendous growth. And machine translation is not there to replace professional translators, it's to help them translate more of that content because of the content is getting greater. Well, that was actually my next question. If you know, many translators, old school translators, are against machine sure. translation because they think this technology is going to replace them. So you don't have an evil plan to make them obsolete yeah. after all. No, that is the question, isn't it? No, we don't. And in fact, our experience is the complete opposite. We have clients that are using machine translation to help improve productivity. In other words, to do more faster. So it's not that the word count is going down, it's the word count is going up and they're actually using more translators um, to post edit the content from um, the Canton platform. And that's pretty much, um, you know, that's a, a standard workflow across our environment. They use machines to speed up the initial translation and then professional translators with real domain expertise, real skills in the area that this product is being translated or service is being translated in are brought in translate more so the localization budgets are not getting smaller they're actually getting larger because there's more opportunity and more content to translate which right is good. so your your clients from your experience they use both machine translation and uh translators or is that depending on your clients on your type it of clients really, it, it really depends on the client the vast majority um, will be using machine translation as a productivity tool to complement their current and expanding teams of professional translators. Um, I don't think I've come across a single client that has said to me, I'm going to install an MT system because I want to get rid of all my translators. I've <laughs> never heard that. And I don't think that will ever happen because even when you're building, like if you think, here, here's, a, here's an interesting stat. It takes us approximately six weeks to build an engine which would contain about a billion words of training data. That's about a six week task, okay? Two weeks of one billion that, words in six one weeks. Billion words, one billion words. It's a, so that would be a big engine, okay? And that's kind of small to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, a billion words would be in, in a certain domain, okay? It would be about two weeks engineering work to build that engine, certify the engine, test it, and do all of our bench tests and tune the engine. So it's a bit but this is based that. only on uh, the, the client's previous uh, translation memories or. Right. Are linguists also involved in this process? That's the interesting stat because it's about two weeks engineering and right. four weeks working with professional translators to test the engine through LQR, language quality review, 
and to finesse the output of the engine. Now, without the professional translator, we would not be able to build the engines we're building today. So they're absolutely critical in the, the pipeline that we use to build engines. And I said, we've project managers here that spend all their time interacting with professional translators to get the engines to produce high quality uh, translations. All right, so you hear that, translators, you're not going anywhere anytime soon. Not so. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, my next question is, what is cloud-based machine translation exactly? Sure. Well, I, I think, first of all, let's talk about what the cloud is. And the cloud right. is really a, a mechanism that will deliver three things. And the first thing it delivers is lots and lots of computing power. That's kind of a good thing. And uh, the second thing it delivers is lots and lots of disk space, which is an even better thing, so that's storage. And then the third thing is lots and lots of memory, because we need lots of memory to uh, run those machines at very high speeds. And machine translation um, is, re requires a huge amount of memory, a huge amount of computing power, and a huge amount of disk space. So the cloud provides everything that we need to run our systems at scale. So you could say that machine translation in the cloud is a perfect marriage because there's an abundance of computing power, an abundance of memory, an abundance of disk space, and we consume that in huge volumes, okay? Mm. And the cloud gets, gets us those um, three things at a very economic price, and it allows us to deliver our machine translation services to our clients worldwide. And they don't need any special hardware, they need no special software, they just need a log on, and they can configure the application environment and build their own systems. And that makes it very, very easy for people to access it. The other thing that the cloud gives us is the fact that it's available 24 by 7, 365 days of the year. And we have clients that have built tier one machine translation systems on the Canton platform that can never fail. Even if data center, we have our system over several data centers. So even if a data center in the cloud goes offline or you know breaks down. That was what I was going to ask. Are there any backups? Yeah, we've everything triplicated across the entire cloud. So if we have clients that require 24 by 7, 365 day, nine, five, nine uptime, and the way we do that is we distribute the, our entire system over in multiple data centers, and at minimum of three. So if even two of those data centers go offline, the system may degrade in terms of performance, but it won't go offline. And as soon as we detect data centers go offline, we're adding more hardware in dynamically as well. And that's a key thing of our system. Some of our clients just require them, um, as I said, 24 by 7, 365 days. They're tier one MT systems. Right. Um, now, about Google Translate, uh, sure. you know, it, it's visited by 500 million people every month. And I assume that some of those translations are commercial translations. So, not just yeah. how to say, I love you in Chinese. Sure. But um, some people aren't convinced that they need to pay for translation. How do you convince your customers to pay for MT? What, what's your strategy? What sets you apart? Sure. Well, I suppose if you look at Canton MT, in essence, what it is referred to, it's customized MT. Whereas if you look at, say, Google and Bing and Yandex, they're kind of jack of all trades systems. So they don't have the correct um, uh, corporate uh, uh, vocabularies or vernaculars that we're using for our clients. They try to translate all content in the same way. The net result is actually low quality translation, which requires a high amount of post editing. Now, if you look at customized systems, the, the thing about customized systems or our systems is that we're building and training engines based on the tr previous translations by our client. So the engine will start to mimic the translation style. We also train the engine with the corporate um, glossary information the corporate vernaculars, the phrases that the, 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 the client requests or has been used to seeing. So customized MT produces higher level translations in that custom domain and requires a lot less post editing. So customized MT gets closer to the style that you're used to and that's good for you and it's obviously good for your client. But we also go one step further because if let's say we take um, say e-commerce as a good consumer of machine translation. Um, if you upload, say, a product, let's call it Chanel perfume, Chanel number four perfume. My favorite. Your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you have expensive tastes. <laughs> so you put that up in, in the UK site of, a, of an e-commerce platform, you're going to say it's 16 fluent ounces or maybe five fluent ounces for a bottle. Now, you try and sell that in Germany, even if you've translated the text into German, 
fluid ounces will they, they don't understand that they have no concept but if you show them what that uh, measurement was in milliliters they don't understand it immediately so the Canton customized engines not only translates the text but recognizes those measurements and it translates those mechanisms into what you would expect in Germany which would be the metric system what you expect in Italy and Spain and so on and so forth right and, so it's like proper localization it, it, absolutely and that solves one problem for the e-commerce clients it actually stops products being returned because of incorrect measurement data or incorrect product specification and that's a huge savings for these guys so customized MT goes beyond just translating the physical words it's improving the user experience to solve a business problem of no product returns and that's very important and you're not going to get that um, with the the free engines Right, so um, I'm very curious to see an example of a translation project. If you can uh, try sure. a screen share and show us how Kantan MT works. Sure. Now, when clients log into the um, Kantan MT platform, uh, the first screen that they're brought to um, is a screen called the My Client Profile screen. And this is where they will manage all of their uh, translation assets and build and customize and train um, their statistical machine translation engines or what we refer to as our Canton MT engines. Now for the purposes of this quick demo, what I'm gonna do is actually gonna build our first engine and then once that engine is built, I'm gonna show you how to translate your first documents um, with these, uh, your first engine as well. So the very first thing we need to do when we're building um, a Canton MT statistical machine translation engine is to give the engine a name. And in this example here, I've given it a name of library ENF4, and I've set my source language as English, and I've set my target language as French. Now, of course, we support up to 550 um, uh, language combinations, and to change the source and the target language of an engine, you just simply click the properties button here, and from the drop down button, um, or menu rather, you can select any language combinations um, that you want. And we support all the European languages, the Nordic languages, Eastern European languages, Middle Eastern languages, including the Baidai language um, groups, um, all of the Asian languages, um, South American, African languages, and also some of those kind of um, unusual zero-byte languages, such as Thai and Vietnamese as well. So you've got a wide selection of languages um, that you can choose from. So once you're happy with your source and target um, language selection and the name you've given to your engine, the next thing you need to do is actually start adding some training data um, to the engine. And one of the really cool features of the Canton platform is that the vast majority of our clients have an abundance of uh, training data that they can use to customize engines. And when I say customize the engine, remember what they're trying to achieve is an engine that mimics their translation style in terms of um, fluency and also more importantly in terms of um, terminology the vernacular of the engine mimics what they're currently used to um, using uh, their teams of professional translators now to actually start training an engine it's very very simple you can upload four different types of training data and uploading training data it couldn't be simpler you simply point to the file that you want to include in your data on your engine rather in this case here it's a monolingual data file and you simply drag it and just drop it onto that control. And what that will do automatically is upload that data directly into your engine. Now, if you have a lot more files, complex file formats and so on, a large number of files, you can, of course, use our upload manager, which gives you a little bit more flexibility. But generally speaking, clients just drag and drop files directly onto this control. Now, the Canton training data can come in four different variants or four different types. The very first type of data is bilingual data and the majority of our clients have an abundance of bilingual data because they're generally you know within the um, have been localizing their products and services for quite some time and have built up a large translation memory repository and to upload a translation memory you simply export it from your favorite cap tool into a tmx file and in this case here i've uploaded a large tmx file that contains multiple tmx files in the language of english going to french in addition to that, we also support monolingual data. And monolingual data is very important because in this example here, I'm building an English to French engine. And monolingual data is normally in the target language. And that gives me lots of phrase examples to look at when I'm assembling 
the actual target translation or when the engine is assembling the target translation. And that, of course, makes sure that it mimics your translation style. More importantly, it improves the fluency. And more importantly, again, it'll reduce the post-editing required um, on the output. The third type of training data is then glossary terms. And just like in any translation project, glossary data is of vital importance during the training of a Camtan engine. And you can upload your terminology um, lists directly from multi-term via the TBX file format, or you can simply create a spreadsheet where column A contains your source terms, column B contains your target term, terms, and that's sufficient for us to understand that that's a glossary file. And then finally, the fourth type of training data we support is what's referred to as stock data. So if you don't have enough words yourselves to build an engine, feel free to select the stock button and then, because this engine is going from English to French, we display only the engines available in that language combination. You can see here I have automotive engines, financial engines, IT engines, legal engines, and so on. And I can pick and choose from this list as many as I want, as few as I want. And that adds them to my engine. And that improves the vocabulary of the engine. And generally, our clients use these stock engines to improve the, the depth of language uh, vocabulary in their engine. Okay? And that's very important because obviously the more engine, the more words your engine understands, the better it is in comprehending your source text and generating a high quality target text as well. Now we've got about 55 billion um, words of highly cleansed um, stock engines available to our clients completely free of charge. And if you click on the, uh, this button here, it'll bring you directly to our library of stock engines that are available. So we've got about 60, 70 stock engines for building instant chat applications. These are very popular, used by a lot of our clients. We have about another 67 legal stock engines, huge range of language combinations. We have IT engines, financial engines, technical training engines, and of course, some medical training engines as well. So a very, very wide range of um, uh, content types that you can use um, in building your engine. Now, when you've uploaded all your training data, you're ready to build your engine or customize that engine. And to do that, you simply click the Build button. And what happens now is because the Camtown environment is a fully um, multi-tenant cloud-based applications, you can build as many engines as you want, as often as you want, and you can translate documents as many as you want, as often as you want with different engines at any time. You don't have to worry about any hardware or any software. We provide all that free of charge behind the scenes, and we just issue you with a job number. This job number here now is 49996. And if I want to see the progress of that job, or indeed of any of the jobs that I'm running on my cloud, you just simply click the My Jobs button here, and that will bring you immediately to all the jobs running in your account. Now, I've only got one job here. But if you could have 20 or 30 jobs, you are not limited by the amount of um, engines or anything like that. You can build them as many as, as many as you want, as often and as frequently as you want as well. So that's the process, guys, of building um, an engine. Now, what do you do to translate files using that engine? Well, instead of clicking on the Training Data tab, this time you click on the Client Files tab. And the Client Files tab is where you're going to drag and drop the files you want to be translated for with this engine directly here. So I can just grab files that I want to translate. So I'll just grab a file here. And I want to translate this VE speech.doc file. And you can see just dragging it and dropping it onto my control automatically uploads it directly for translation. And in this case here, I'm translating a docx file. I'm translating a spreadsheet file. I'm translating a text file, a ttx file, which is a Travis file. And I'm also translating a generic TMX file. And I'm using a TBX file because I want this terminology to be applied to all the files I'm translating here. And to translate those files, you simply click the Translate button. And again, remember, we're a multi-tenant cloud-based architecture. You're not limited by any hardware or software limits. And it'll give you a job number. And that's the job number that you'll be able to use to track the progress of this translation job. Now, the Canton platform is insanely fast. In fact, you can build an engine or customize an engine at approximately 4 million words per hour. And that is just incredibly fast. So imagine if you had an 8 million word engine, it would take approximately four, uh, two hours rather, 
for that engine to be um, trans uh, built. In terms of translation speed, the typical Cantan engine will translate approximately six to eight million words per day. So you've got plenty of capacity. Once your engine is built, you've got plenty of capacity um, to actually um, translate all those uh, lots of words um, on behalf of your clients. So I hope that's good, guys. That's a very, very quick um, whistle-stop tour of how to build your first engine and how to translate your first document. I hope that was helpful, Linda. Thanks for your attention. Thank you for presenting your software to us. And just to wrap things up, uh, what do you see the future of machine translation as in the coming years? Sure. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting question. And I think in the next five years, um, we'll lose the distinction um, between translated content to translation memory and content coming from a machine translation system. And in fact, we'll all be just referring to it as just pre-translated content. Um, and in fact, even today in Cantan, um, the Cantan system is actually a fusion of two technologies. We've fused translation memory and machine translation all under the one um, uh, technology. So you get the best, the power and the flexibility of machine translation with the accuracy and precision of translation memory from the Cantan platform. We refer to that technology, by the way, our translation memory technology in Cantan is known as total recall. So I think the blurring of where the, uh, the difference between translation memory and machine translation will, will start to converge to just being referred to as pre-translation. And then pre obviously the uh, role of a translator will have to change slightly to adopt that new reality and that they'll be doing less new word translation and just um, um, improving and editing, just like the way they do post edit today or reviewing of translation today, they'll be doing a lot more of that. So I think right. that's gonna happen, that convergence of those. And of course, that's being driven because we're seeing the power of the cloud permeate into every desktop um, and every business um, in the industry today. And they can avail of that, of that power that gives them those higher quality uh, translation memory systems. And I think ultimately that will drive the requirement for higher levels of translation. It's a different type of translation. That's the reality that's gonna hit the industry, but it's a higher volume and that's gonna be good for us. It's gonna be good for you guys in the localization service industry. More important, it's gonna be good for translators because they're gonna to continue to drive higher requirements for high quality translation. Right, so it's going to be higher volume more productivity, higher quality. What's not to like about that? It's a good view to have, exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the good work that you're doing, Tony, in the translation industry. And uh, I wish you all the best. And thank you for doing this interview with and us. Thank you very much for uh, considering us for this interview. Thanks very much. All the best. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.